What's good, Commanders fans? Quick video here. Uh, I am on vacation, as you guys can see. I'm in a uh, hotel right now. But I just want to make a quick video because the Commanders did make some roster moves. Uh, not big moves, but I'll talk about the releasing of Armani Rogers first because I did like Armani Rogers and I did pick him. I didn't make an official 53 man roster, uh, but I did make a prediction of which tight ends would make the roster and I picked him to make it. So I'm already wrong on that. But of course, I will be doing a, another 53 man or a, an official 53 man roster prediction before the picks, before uh, Dan Quinn and Adam Peters make their decision in September or whenever it is after the three preseason games. But I do want to pour one out for Armani Rodgers. I do think he's talented. The Achilles injury definitely set him back. Last year was supposed to be a year where he would have gotten an opportunity to get more playing time. I thought he did show some things his rookie year, the reverse sweep. Even though it was only two or three plays, like you saw the talent, you saw the flashes, you saw the speed, you saw the athleticism, the explosiveness there in one or two or three plays. And it's like, we don't really get that from the tight end position. We're hoping we get that from Ben Sennett. And a little bit of that from Zach, Zach no, yeah, Zach, you're not gonna get yak ability from Zach, but Zach is doing a good job in training camp. We've seen Zach Ertz for years, put up big numbers and good numbers in the league. But uh, Armani Rogers, I think he will be picked up somewhere else. It's like Dax Milne was signed by the Raiders and Percy Butler was already signed. Uh, Christian Holmes was already signed by the Giants, if I'm not mistaken. So Armani Rogers will be signed. Will he make a roster, a 53-man roster? That's a that's a two to be to be determined. But I do think he de I think he deserves a spot in this league for sure. So I'm rooting for Armani Rogers. I think he'll be picked up somewhere else. And um, you know he was UDFA. I think for a UDFA, I think he's a, I think he's a darn good prospect. I think he's a guy that should be on a practice squad or on a team. Uh, getting better day by day, year by year. I think he can help somebody. I think he can be a number, a good number three tight end or a good number two tight end or a red zone threat. How tall is our money, Rogers? Like six, six, four, six, five, something like that. He's a big fella. He's a big fella. I think he might be six, six or something like that. But uh, he's a big fella. He's a big fella. All right, so let's move on to the guys that we did sign here very quickly. Um, they did put Alex Akingbalu. Uh, they waived him with an injury designation. He was carted off the field per Nikki Javala in practice the other day. So, you know, and then Brandon Coleman didn't practice the other day, but he should be he should be ready for the Jets joint practice. And then Andrew Wiley has not he's been out with tightness. You know, he hasn't really been participating in practice. So we kind of are I'm not gonna say down at the tackle spot, but you know, we got some injuries going on and stuff like that. Guys that are not hundred percent, you know, I mean it happens through training camp. So they decided to sign tackle Alex Taylor. Uh, you look at Alex Taylor. Now, Alex Taylor hasn't really played much in the league, but he, he has some time with the Browns, uh, the Bears, with the Browns again, with the Cowboys, and he played in the USFL with the Birmingham Stallions. Stallions. Six foot eight, he did play basketball. Uh, he also is related to per Pearson Prelude. Pearson Prelude did play at Virginia Tech. I do remember the name. He, he played defensive back at uh, in, in the NFL as well. Now you look at some of the write-ups. Now he most likely he, he's just a camp body, but we need a body in there with Alex a King Blue out. We need a body for preseason for the joint practice and whatnot. So we need another guy in there. Uh, he is six foot eight, three hundred and eight pounds. Uh, went to South Carolina State, undrafted guy. Was a basketball player, like I said. Strengths: athletic build with tapered waist and very long limbs. Twitchy out of stance and into blocks. Plays with proper hand placement and technical savvy at the point of attack. Easy climber up to linebackers. Above average body control and contact balance for a tall player. Long arms and agile feet to sustain in space. Or wash down zone blocks, unlocks hips, and gains depth in pass sets. Adequate posture and bent through the pass set. Foot quickness to run edge burners past their exit. Reacts and redirects against early inside moves. So a good write-up for him for his draft pro profile on NFL.com. Weaknesses, they say a former Hooper making some scouts question his love of football. Height will work against the center of gravity. So that's the write-up on him. So we'll see what happens with him if he makes the practice squad. But most likely he will be a, uh, a camp body. Uh, but he is athletic. He's 6'8", athletic, played basketball, started all 11 games at right tackle in, in, a, in his senior year, and uh, made a Associated Press All-American and first-team All-MEAC honor. So, so I mean, there's some there's some positive things about him. And then we signed J.C. Hausenauer. Now, J.C. Hausenauer, he's a center, can play guard as well, played for the Steelers, 
was on the, was with the Giants organization last year. OG Bobby Johnson, the offensive line coach, was with the Giants last year. So maybe there's some familiarity there. Maybe he had some type of influence there. Six foot two, 205 pounds, went to Alabama as well in 2018. Uh, played 45, all 45 of his career games with the Steelers. Now he had some starts in the league. He had four starts in 2020, three starts in 2021. You look at his PFF numbers, 57 uh, run block grade, 52 pass block, I mean, I'm sorry, 57 overall PFF grade in 2020, 52 pass block, and a 52 uh, pass block grade and a run block grade of 68. So that's a write-up on him. 2017 was a senior, played in eight games and played guard and center. I also played in, there was like a big game that he played in. Played in the national championship game against Georgia as well. So he's played in some big games, has some experience there. Most likely another camp body, but you know, you got Mason Brooks playing guard and center. You got Ricky Stromberg still on the roster. So he's going to be battling with those guys. I don't think he'll make the roster. Maybe he will. We'll see. Or on the practice squad and then get a couple games. So that's really about it. And then um, other news is uh, Sadiq Charles retired. And, and, you know, so, I mean, you think about that, and that's just another Ron Rivera uh, draft pick right there that just just didn't really work out. A lot of injuries there, and just honestly, just wasn't, wasn't he just wasn't good enough. So him and AGG were drafted in that fourth round, and they both have retired. And he unexpectedly retired. They said he was, he was supposed to start for the Titans this year, so it's not like he was just riding the bench or anything like that. He was legit supposed to start, so... And they said that they were surprised. All the media, all the media reporters and beat reporters for the Titans said that they were surprised by this. But we'll keep a focus with the uh, Commanders. And tomorrow is the is the joint uh, practice with the Jets. So we'll see how many fights happen. But of course, we want to see how Jane Daniels does. Brandon Coleman, Mikey Sanders still, Emmanuel Forbes against uh, Gary Wilson. That's a matchup I'm looking for. Uh, Brandon Coleman and uh, of course Terry versus Sauce Gardner. That should be fun. Jahan Dotson versus Sauce Gardner as well. And, um, yeah, that's, that's really what I'm looking for for the most part. Of course, Aaron Rodgers going up against Aaron Rodgers and Garrett Wilson and, and guys like that. Tyron Smith may not practice. So I did want to see, you know, Dante Fowler and Doris Armstrong going up, going up against Tyron Smith. The guys like Morgan Moses is on the Jets, too. Tyler Conklin is a good tight end. But uh, Aaron Rodgers against our – how does our defense hold up against Aaron Rodgers and practice. How does how does Jane Daniels go up against a really, really good defense with Quentin Williams, Javon Kinlaw, uh CJ Mosley, Sauce Gardner, and those guys? How does Jane Daniels do against those guys? And like Andrew Wiley may not participate. Brandon Coleman will see how much he does since he was held out the other day. So how does the offensive line hold up against their defensive line? How does Jane Daniels do? How does he look? So those are the biggest storylines for me for training camp practice. And um, yeah, of course you see the former commander or former Washington player in Morgan Moses. All right, Jess Hell Commanders. Peace.